first pitch here is going to be by Transfinder. Uh, ooh, ooh, really? Yes. We'll talk about a product here. It's called Southie Fine. We're having some fun tonight, so we'll take some pictures. But uh, Joe Messia and Liz will talk more about it. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Didn't Tony teach us anything yet? One more time. Good evening. Good evening. A little bit better. My name is Joe Messia. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for TransFinder. This is Liz Chahan, our Software Project Manager. We need your help tonight. Tony definitely gave you an idea of what we're going to be talking about. But before we do that, we want to tell you about Selfie Finder. If you go to the App Store or Google Play, download Selfie Finder, then search for Startup. Upload some pictures and you're going to see them scrolling through tonight. So we do need your help. Tony said we're a growing company. What he didn't say is how many positions we need to hire for. We need to hire 20 new team members in the next 30 days. We need to hire software developers, QA team members, product managers. We need to hire development team leaders, client project managers, trainers, software support specialists, and salespeople. You name the position, we need to hire for it. What's your uh, development stack? A lot of different uh, technologies that we're using. The most recent stuff that we're actually developing is actually Angular 2. Okay. Uh, but that's for a lot of the mobile stuff that we're doing. Kate Shield is here someplace. Kate, our director of software development. I would recommend talking to Kate after the event. Thanks. We have, I'm sorry? Thanks. No problem. So we have, actually have a lot of TransFinder team members here. There's no way I can go through in three minutes everything. So find somebody in a TransFinder t-shirt tonight, talk to us a little bit. Whether it's for you, somebody you know, maybe it's a friend or family member, just talk to us a little bit. All right, so I wanna have a little bit of fun with you. We've got some questions. I wanna get a little bit loud. We've got some TransFinder gear for you. So anybody that's calling out the answer, maybe a t-shirt, we got some squishy buses. All right, so few questions. They're very easy and they will stay that way. I have a little wager though. Where's Joel Terry? Joel, Joel Terry bet me tonight. I bet Joe that we can be loud enough in this room that the people eating dinner next door can hear us. I got one yes. This guy's gonna be loud enough. All right, here we go. First question's easy. What company has made the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing privately? Wow. Wow. Well, I didn't even get through the question. All right, next question. What company has three offices, including Schenectady, Schenectady. Austin, and Shanghai, China? All right, a little bit better. I got 30 seconds left, Jason said. Jason told me I've got no time left, and I'm going to ask him for 30 more seconds. Next question. What company is hiring 20 new team members in Ecosystem, which is our incubator program. I'm going to be at your MC for the evening. And um, what we want to do first here, we actually have, we didn't know what to expect tonight. We, we put out there the open mic concept, and we figured with the usual timing that we do, we'd have room for 15 pitches. We weren't sure we were going to get them. We have 28 pitches lined up for tonight. Thank you. Yes. Hey, I bring news from Saratoga Springs. The Pitney Farm has been saved. Anyone from Saratoga Springs know what I'm talking about? The Pitney Farm 
166 acres on West Avenue, right across from the street from the high school and the YMCA, has been acquired by a new nonprofit organization called Pitney Meadows Community Farm, Inc. And we have big plans for this property. Uh, over the next five years, we may spend as much as $15 million developing this into a first class uh, community farm and agricultural resource center and farm training center. So one of the most exciting things about this project is that these 166 acres, 120 of which are tillable, that is, can be used for farming, um, we, we envision breaking these up into five acre plots and making them available as incubator space, essentially, for young farmers who want to get started and want to learn all the techniques of sustainable farming. There will be a planning meeting, a public forum, in Saratoga Springs at Universal Preservation Hall this Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. If you have any interest in agriculture, farming, sustainability, open spaces, whatever, um, if this sounds interesting, please join us. And that's my opinion. Thank you very much. All right, Sam, thank you. That was a great model of maybe a one minute pitch, so thank you very much. Uh, Billy Obenauer, next on deck after Billy is Donna Riley and then Mike Fenley. I'm Billy with Dana NYCR, the Capital Region's Home for Data Professionals. In December, you heard our leadership talking about some of our long term needs, but today I have an immediate need that we found out about yesterday when one of our members told me about a little problem that she was having with an event this Saturday, and I'm going to let Ursula share that with you because we could use your help in solving it. Thanks, Billy. Uh, like Billy said, my name is Ursula Kashmarik, and I am organizer of Open Data Day Albany. Anyone ever heard of Open Data Day? Yes, that guy right there. Thank you. <laughs> it is a seven-year-old now worldwide gathering of local citizens interested in promoting and doing cool things with publicly available data sets. We want to have an inaugural event here in the Albany, Troy, Schenectady area, and we're gonna make it happen on Saturday at the Troy Center, uh, Tech Valley Center of Gravity. Starts at nine, ends at three. There is free food, there is free liquid refreshments. We are looking for developers, coders, hackers, interested citizens, librarians, statisticians, GIS specialists people who just are interested in open data. It doesn't matter who you are or what your skill set is, we want you to be there. The website is opendataalbany.org. There are links to the Eventbrite page where you can register for free. We hope to see you there. Hop me down if you have any questions or simply insist that you're going to show up. I will gladly talk to you. Thank you. Don Riley, I'm from Beyond Morning, and um, it's a social media site designed to help people uh, grieve and thrive beyond the loss of a, loss of a loved one. Um, so this is a, a, a new enterprise, and uh, really the issue that people have today with grieving that is different from in the past is that we're spread out all over the world, and so our sense of community is really different uh, than it was uh, 20, 50, 100 years ago where people were living physically closer to one another. Um, what happens when you spread out like that is we try to sort of power grief, right? We come together, we, we're sad, we, but we share stories, we try to get our uh, photos and sort of put them up on some website and then tell everybody kind of, oh, you should go over here and look at this. And it's really disorganized. And, um, and it happens in a very short period of time. And that's not really how people grieve. It's not how people recover uh, from any kind of loss at all. And it's certainly not how people um, support each other in a community. So uh, this, this site is uh, designed specifically to do that um, and to help people through that process with timing cues and um, other cueing so that the process becomes a lot easier. And what happens now a lot is that um, certain people get left behind, right? A, a widow or a widower often will be sort of still in the grieving process. 
uh, a long time after is a sort of normal set of time, and uh, the, these kinds of cues can help their community to help them through that, that time period. Um, thank you. Okay, so um, I'll get right to it. I am looking for a developer to help me with this project, and um, so if you are interested, know anyone who's interested, think somebody might be interested and want to talk to me about it, come find me. Thank you. Okay, next up is Mike Fenley, and then we have Paula Delato, and followed by Eric Phillips. Hello, my name is Mike Fenley with Sustainable Impressions. My partner Kevin and I started this company about two months ago based off an idea that we've been developing for the past 10 years. We're both graduates of SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry in upstate New York. Go Stumpies, anybody? Just my wife? Yeah. Go Stumpies, yes. So I graduated as an engineer and I've been an engineer ever since. My buddy Kevin, he's been in project management, he's a construction manager, and he's been doing that ever since. But on these parallel tracks, we knew eventually we would meet up, converge, and start this company. So what do we do? We are sustainable project managers. So let's say you buy a property, I don't know, like a 166-acre farm, something like that. I don't know, just off the top of my head. And let's say you're somebody who happens to be eco-conscious. Now, if you weren't eco-conscious, to try and figure out how to upgrade your property is a headache enough. I'm trying to figure out which contractor to choose from, which designer, any vendors that you might need to pick out, but to throw in eco-conscious on top of that, you're out of your mind. No, you're not. Call us at Sustainable Impressions. The idea is we're gonna take you through it step by step. We'll help you pick out the best designer for the job. We'll make sure that they put in sustainable technologies, sustainable materials, from day one, so that once you get to the construction stage, we can then help you out with picking out the best contractor for the job, and we'll be your eyes and ears on site, making sure they continue to adhere to those plans and continue to use best practices. And that's where I am here, and this is my pitch, is I need to know if you know any contractors and vendors in the area, here in the uh, Capital Region or the Hudson Valley Region, you don't have to necessarily be sustainable-minded, that's our job. We just want good work. So if you are a contractor, or if you know of any, if you have family members that are, please get in touch with me. I'll be walking around after this. Uh, but you can also follow us on Instagram, Sustainable Impressions, or you can email me, Mike, at SustainableImpressions.com, or my partner, Kevin, Kevin, at SustainableImpressions.com. Thank you. Hi, Paula Colado. I'm talking about Audacious Designs, which is a cybersecurity company. We have a text-based encryption, which is very different. Usually it's bid-based. It's patented. It's unique every single time, so no one can ever figure out who you're sending what to. And um, we've had a lot of interest from the military um, and industries such as Komodo and Dell, and nobody wants to be first. So what we really need is help with a uh, first adopter. We need uh, beta testing. Uh, we've had feedback uh, from white papers that we put through that they want us to have an academic partner. So we, that's our ask. Our ask is for um, financial and healthcare companies to help us beta test it, um, possibly hackers, developer partners. Uh, that's the kind of thing that we need because it's hard to find the first one, but we have a lot of people who want to be second. Thank you very much. How you doing? My name's Eric Phillips. I'm from North Colony Schools. Anybody ever hear of Shaker High School? Shaker High School. We're right across the river in Latham, New York. Uh, my position, I'm the supervisor for career and technical education. I supervise the business teachers. We have six business teachers. We have five technology teachers at the high school, and I have four family consumer science teachers. Uh, we're interested in getting kids good careers. So what's the best career at all? Being a teacher. 30 years I've been in education. I started as a financial planner. I came back, and I love teaching. 
why I'm here is I have a business teacher retiring. I think I have one more business teacher retiring and I have a tech teacher leaving. So if you have a technical background, you ever have, you have any passion about teaching high school students? Or you have a business background, a business degree, passion about teaching that to uh, students? Come see me, I have cards. I can help you find your way through the state ed maze and get you certified. We're looking, Shaker High is a great school and we're looking for great teachers. Thank you for your time. All right, next up is Kevin Smith, then Alex Gooden, and then Adam Mason. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Smith, and I actually work for the guys who are in front of me. Uh, I teach technology at Shaker High School. I've been teaching there for 20 years, and um, presently I teach uh, technology courses, but mainly engineering focused. And over the last probably 10 years, um, we've seen a kind of a, kind of a flux in technology, understanding technology. It's more than mechanical. We've also uh, my work. Oops, sorry. I also to work with the microphone. I also um, teach the engineering capstone class, which basically I have seven groups that do various projects from civil to mechanical to uh, even bio. But we're noticing that we need more mentors. We have a kind of a steady group of people that have different interests and we're looking for people that will help us with um, web development, app development, um, stuff to deal with uh, electronics and um, we're just looking for people to help. So if you have an interest of mentoring, for a few hours, every once every once in a while, to establish the contact, and then we will, you know, the kids will ask you for an email and help them along that process. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Alexander Guten. I'm with a company called Outbound. Um, we actually presented here a few months ago as a company called Conversation Driver, and we recently rebranded to reflect the changes in our company and growth in our company and changes in our product. Um, what Outbound does really briefly is it's a sales acceleration and automation tool that helps B2B salespeople connect with more of the people that they want to talk to. What we know is a typical salesperson makes between two or three attempts with a prospect before they give up. Uh, but in reality, they need to make seven to ten attempts before they can talk to someone that might be interested in one of their products. So our service does three primary things. The first thing is it provides a process for salespeople to follow, for managers to set up, and for managers to, to uh, analyze and see what, what is working and what isn't. The second thing it does is it automates that process and um, helps the sales rep do the menial things that they shouldn't be doing, like sending emails automatically, picking up phone calls and things like that. And the third thing it does, is, this is kind of our secret sauce, is we have something called human assistance <coughs> or sales assistance that actually make the dials for the salesperson. And so instead of one person making one dial at a time, we have three to five assistants all over the world making uh, phone calls on behalf of the salesperson and only connecting them to live conversations. What this means between the three things that we do is a 30 to 50% increase in sales for a typical company that uses our service. What's really exciting about our company is we've grown organically using our own tools. So we eat our own dog food and every single client we've gotten has been through using our own tools so we know they work. And as we improve, our clients improve with us. My ask is really simple. We are the fastest growing company in the capital region, uh, startup company in the capital region. And what we're looking for is really talented salespeople. So if you're a B2B salesperson, please see me after. We're, we're hiring immediately. We're doing interviews tomorrow and Friday. Uh, if you can't make it one of those days, let's talk next week. We'd love to talk to hear from you. If you're not an experienced B2B salesperson or you don't know what B2B sales is, but you have an interest in sales people and in, in, uh, in doing sales, uh, please talk to me after. We have other opportunities available as well. Thanks a lot. Next, then Bob Frederick, Mike Barron, Frederica, Frederica Giordano. That's the next line. Up. 
So uh, the first thing I'd like to say is I actually went through the Reveal Accelerator. I recommend it for everybody. The business leadership and the mentors is excellent. And I'm currently in the NSF um, i core for the uh, spring cohort. Going through the Valley of Suck with Clint, Kelly, and Jason is amazing. So I recommend you all try and, and sign up for that. So on to my apps. Um, how many of you use apps to find places like restaurants and bars and get deals and events? Raise your hands. Good. So I made two mobile marketing apps. Um, one is called Center Square. It has 24 categories of businesses like restaurants and bars, fitness centers, and liquor stores. And you can find their um, events, their pit products, their deals, anytime, anywhere, when you're traveling or local, there's nearby. We also have proximity technology in those. So as soon as you walk into the business, you're getting a notification about their coupons and their products. The other app I created was 420 Square for the cannabis community. That has eight categories of business, from medical to recreational, and laboratories and cultivators. So what I'm asking for is, I'd like to start doing some free pilot testing with some local businesses on Center Square. I want to see what your opinions are, I want your feedback. I also would like to do customer discovery. Um, my apps are ready to launch, they're going to be out soon, so I'd like to get some business cards, some emails from people, get your feedback on the apps. And my um, third thing that I would like to ask for is just general feedback from everybody about the app. So, thank you. So my name's Bob Frederick, and I've had the pleasure of being in higher education for 30 years. Uh, I've been the career and transfer director at Schenectady County Community College. Any grads or students anywhere in the audience? Anybody that transferred? Okay, so that's great that I'm not seeing anybody because now I get to introduce myself to you. So I worked at SUNY Cortland before that. Any Cortland uh, people in the audience? All right, love it. But of course, I've also been at Syracuse and Binghamton and Hudson Valley as well in regards to my educational training. And for somebody that never wanted to go to college, I fell in love. Uh, I recently retired uh, as the director. I took early retirement and to take, my, uh, to take my side business, Employee Development Associates, which I started in 2005, to take the idea of higher ed, career and educational development to businesses to organizations, to professional associations that want to grow their people. I specialize in entry level to mid level. I have a love of the masses, let's just say that. There's a lot of educational or uh, executive coaching for those on the top tier. My heart is where the masses lie. So I'm the talent agent of the masses. Think of me that way. If you're having troubles with your sons or daughters or spouses, that feel like they need to go to college because it's the thing to do, but still don't have an intentional reason for going, or they're not taking accountability for that, I'm the person that you want to call. You want me to be there side by side with the people that you're trying to help find that education can be a pleasurable experience, not just to get a degree that they think is gonna give them this money, but they're there to learn something that has value beyond themselves. Value to their community. Value to the businesses or nonprofits that, or their community that's gonna have value. That's what I specialize in. Personalizing work, making it meaningful. And I've been proud to coach tens of thousands of people over my 30 years between the colleges and the community members that I've worked with professional boards and executive boards I've served on uh, to make this happen. And it's not because of me, it's because of the energy and I know that people want more from what they're doing. So my request for you, I got a Google Analytics uh, email today saying, you know, there's not as many people uh, looking at your website anymore. And I hate that idea. So I'm asking on behalf of Google uh, to help me, uh, help you, by going to the op, meaning T-H-E-O-P-P -P zone. 
www.employeedevelopmentassociates.com or you can spell out employeedevelopmentassociates.com and go to my email or go to my website, find out more about me and find out how I can serve your business, your organization, or your people. Aaron, you're up next, then Frederica, then Alan Carl, and Tom Morgan. Thank you. There's a good blend of students and professionals in this room. So let me ask you a question. Is there a disconnect between <clears throat> the skill sets that you need to be successful in a professional office with the skill sets that students come out of degree programs? Yes. yes. I think so. And I'm not entirely sure why that is the problem that everybody's trying to solve. Like expertise transfer is everything. That's what our society is based upon. Getting expertise from the people that have it, the people that need it or want it. It's not just, it, it's everything. So I created a benefit corporation called the Expertise Project. I'm just starting out. So this is less of a pitch than it is an introduction. The purpose of the Expertise Project is to improve the way that expertise is transferred between professionals and students. It's, it's, it's the human pieces that we need to capture into a classroom. The war stories, the, the intuition. That's the part I'm trying to capture. So what's my ask? It's simply for your business cards. Let, want, to make, want to make contact. Are you a developer or a uh, programmer who wants to help me build a platform to connect experts and students? Um, are you an educator or a grant administrator who believes in STEM and wants to get real world expertise into the classroom? Are you uh, just somebody who has expertise but doesn't have weeks to write a book or to become an adjunct professor, but you can give back with drips and drabs? Uh, come to my website. I have cards outside. Um, I didn't do an introduction. My name is Mike Barron. That's important. I'm a 30-something upstate New Yorker. I'm a building structural engineer. The chasing company is here in Troy. And I'm an RPI grad. So consider ourselves introduced. Thank you. coordinator for the for Tech Valley Game Space. You may have heard of us. Um, if not, um, we're actually headquartered in uh, actually at the Tech Valley Center Gravity Building. We're um, uh, we've been doing a lot of cool cool stuff. Uh, actually, Jamie, our founder, has been up here before um, in the past. Um, I'm, I'm here to tell you about um, some of the cool cool stuff we've been doing and some of what we would like from the community. We've been, we have regular events every Wednesday evening. Also, most recently, we started um, started up a program. Sorry, start, started up a program where we are uh, doing mentorship groups on specific game um, game uh, game development related uh, topics, such as game art. And um, basically, we want to make sure people can it, game development is more accessible, and you can learn like the public can learn more about game development. Also, um, also, also, we would like to help bring the game development community, the developers, um, professionals, more to, together and then help bring that, that community together. Um, so, most recently we've been doing, uh, yes, the Orbit Mentorship Program. We're hoping to get more professional game developers as mentors. Um, so, if you're interested in, in helping out with, with that, that'd be great. We're all also looking for volunteers, and just people to come to our events. We're, we're a really fun group. Um, so every Wednesday um, evening at the Tech Valley Center of Gravity, usually in the community room. And we have other events if you want to learn more. Uh, you can check out our website at Tech Valley Center, uh, Tech Valley Gamespace.com. Um, and if you would like to know more, you can either talk to Jamie, who's uh, sitting there in the audience, <laughs> or, to, or to me. So thank you.
name is Alan Carl. Uh, I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon at Albany Med. And I've been there about 30 years and have developed technology typically on the basis of needs that I see my patient, my patients could benefit from. Uh, in the past, I've had the opportunity to bring that, in the past, I've had the opportunity to bring that to, uh, to companies to develop it. Nowadays, the companies are too ripe people coming up after me don't have that opportunity, so I've tried to develop a crowdsourcing, crowd sharing, crowdfunding technology which would allow, in my case, surgeons to come together, uh, bring their ideas through their own scientific <coughs> advisory board, because nowadays all these companies have small scientific advisory boards. If I could do it of a society nature, maybe 2,000 doctors, who would then find that the technology or the idea that's being pitched by those docs in the, uh, in the trenches makes sense, we'd be able to leapfrog some of the things that industry thwarts us with because of their need for difference in gain. So we've developed a, uh, a website called Brightboard Surgical. Uh, it allows physicians to learn how to take an idea and develop it and then essentially crowdsource it with their colleagues and vet it to identify if it makes sense and then bring it through the steps of development which we would want to educate them about because they don't have that education. And then allow uh, industry or companies to uh, help foster those ideas, but essentially those ideas will be uh, democratized by the, the large group of people who would now vet it. And that's not how it's presently done. A company, even Johnson & Johnson, has 10 scientific advisors uh, this would be a thousand scientific advisors to vet your idea. So um, we, I presented here, I was able to find uh, somebody to help me build the website. Now I need help in business and marketing. Uh, I'm pretty much uh, devoid of knowledge in that area. So whether it's a mentor or a project manager, uh, I'm looking for help in that area. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tom Morgan, and I'm senior scientist with the Rensselaer IDEA. Um, IDEA stands for the Institute for Data Exploration and Applications. Uh, it's a campus-based entity that has multiple missions. Um, one is in research and development, the second is in campus infrastructure, and the third is in education, and that's what I want to talk to you about right now. We're looking for data sets. We run a, in the fall, we run a hands-on student laboratory, three to five member teams, and their job is to solve a problem in data analytics. And we're looking for real problems with real data sets from the real world. The data can be anything. It can be business data, it can be biomedical data, it can be manufacturing, um, it can be text, it can be numeric. As long as it's digital, we'll deal with it. This will be the third fall that we've run this course. We've had a lot of success with it. We've had 35 students last year in uh, 12 teams, and we're looking to expand that as much as we can. So anyone out there that's got some data, we'd love to uh, interface with the students. Uh, we set it up so that the data contributor is basically a client. We meet with the students to talk with the data. During the course of the semester, you'll have pretty much weekly contact with them answer their questions, they'll do presentations, and at the end of the semester, a final presentation of their findings. So anyone who's interested in this, I'll be around here the rest of the evening, contact me, we'll trade some cards, and see if we can uh, find some mutual interest. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. So we are right at the halfway point of our pitches, and I lied, we have 30, not 28. So, let me ask you all, are you enjoying these pitches? Yes. So, we're not bored. Okay, excellent. How many of you have identified with any of the presenters' asks and will be reaching out to them to help? Great. We're always looking for testimonials. We want to hear both from the presenters as well as from those of you who step up to the ask to see how you're working together. We want to know what connections are coming out of this. Uh, you know, we want to continue to 
to enhance and promote and um, endorse the, the collaborations and the impacts that are coming out of this and other such meetings. So please send those stories to Kelly and Jason, Clint and myself. All right, so continuing with the lineup, we have uh, next on deck would be Mike Lynch, followed by Rebecca Murtaugh, then Jack Carpenter, and Linda Segale. Okay, so Mike, you have the mic. Um, I'm Mike Lynch, I'm one of the original uh, faculty members in the Games and Simulation Arts and Sciences program at RPI, the GSAS program, and uh, it's been running for about 15 years now. It's uh, one of the most successful programs in the country. And I'm speaking here tonight, though, about the Digital Gaming Hub initiative, uh, which, uh, which is for three cities in the state, New York City, of course, uh, Rochester, and us. And the idea is to bring together people who can start studios, who can staff studios to create jobs, and create things using this new, wonderful digital entertainment technology that we have. Troy's a perfect place for this. This has got a great quality of life. This is the new Brooklyn. This resonates with game developers. And although it will never be Los Angeles or San Francisco, we could be a force. And so the Digital Gaming Hub is an attempt to do that. My ask for tonight is we just launched the website. It's gamehub.rpi.edu. It's really ragged, really new. We're building it with volunteer student labor. And uh, if you have anything to do with the video game industry, whether it's actually developing, or you do marketing, or you do staffing, or anything like that, and you think you might want to have your, your organization appear on our website as a resource, we'd love to hear from you. It's a three-prong approach. We basically are trying to support developers, educators, and students uh, so they all can get something out of the process. And that's the Digital Gaming Hub. I'm Mike Lynch. You can mail, mail me at lynchm2 at rpi.edu, L-Y-N-C-H, letter M, numeral 2, at rpi.edu. Uh, or you can just basically see me afterwards. And the website, again, is gamehub.rpi.edu. And don't expect it to be super wizzy yet. We're still working on it. Thank you very much. Rebecca? Hello everyone. Oh, we're gonna get the mic up high. Hi everyone! How are we doing? It's nice to see all these beautiful faces. I am, well, Rebecca Murtaugh. Some of you know me as the founder of Carner Blue Marketing. Uh, some of you have to date back quite a ways with me, but um, today I'm here to talk to you about my second book. How many of you are here tonight looking for talent? Talent, programmers, marketing. Keep your hands up. How many of you are looking for investors? Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Talent, investors. How many of you are looking for clients? Customers, vendors, beta testers, reviewers. Okay, so we're all looking for something. Everyone is seeking a resource to help them advance their goals. And what I've done, uh, my, my background is pretty diverse, but what I've done um, over the last couple of years in working with some pretty amazing people, I've had the opportunity to work with entrepreneurs across the country, including Silicon Valley, here in Tech Valley. And one of the things that they, one of the things that they have in common is that they're often limited to the marketplace that they're in. So the book that I've written is called Crowd Success. And what I've, there's a bird, isn't there? <laughs> I was wondering what everybody's looking at. I was like, geez, did I miss my hair? There's two birds flying around. Okay, so sorry. Um, so, okay, there we go. Uh, so my ask tonight is, um, so the book, the book I've written is actually designed to help you tap into the psychology and the science of the crowd. How many of you heard of crowdfunding? How many of you have heard of crowdsourcing? Okay, so now I want to focus on crowd success. How do we help each other get what we need faster and achieve our goals more quickly? So that's what I've done. I've written the book. What I'm asking tonight is because you are the folks I've written this book for, that I would love to have you volunteer to be an advanced copy reviewer. That means I will give you, I'm gonna, I have a bunch of these tonight. You just give me your name, 
and your email address. I will send you the link. You will get a link to download the book for free from Amazon. You will give me an honest review, which will be published on Amazon. Please be fine. <laughs> um, and, then, and then as my uh, sign of gratitude, when the, the published book, the print book comes out, I will send you a signed copy with my thanks. Um, so just come, I'm seated in the back corner of the room. If you just grab these, I would absolutely love your feedback. And I hope you enjoy the book. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Jack Carpenter, and uh, I've seen the movie Birds before, so these guys are making me nervous. But I am a 24-year-old Emmy Award-winning entrepreneur here to tell you about my business, Two Buttons Deep. Uh, Two Buttons Deep is a news and entertainment website based right here in Troy in the Quackenbush building, and we make original content for the internet. And we do that because we as Americans spend way too much time on our cell phones, I'd say about 99% of us have one at hand in our pocket, and about half of you are on your cell phone right now. And when you're on your cell phone, you're either playing games or you're absorbing content. And there's three types of content you can absorb from your cell phone. The first type is the worst type, and that is the mindless opinions of your peers, and you get that through Facebook, Twitter, texting. The next type is professional productions. That's Hollywood movies, television shows, Netflix, anything you want to binge watch. Third type is content made for the internet. Those are the quick videos, the web series, the podcasts, the articles, and that is what we want to enter the market of with Two Buttons Deep. Because in about the last five years, that industry has been booming with people who are behind producing mass content for mass audiences. Uh, companies like BuzzFeed, Barstool Sports, Vice News, they are now worth tens of millions of dollars because advertisers have figured out the easiest way to get to a consumer is through their cell phone. It's not through radio or television anymore. So the reason I'm here tonight is because there is absolutely no company like that in the capital region, nonetheless upstate New York. So I started uh, Two Buttons Deep about six months ago. I'm a broadcasting student. I graduated in 2015. And unless I want to work in the news or the radio, which is a very rigid format, there's really nothing else here, which is why I started this company. So about six months ago, I started uh, Two Buttons Deep in partnership with Ignite U over in the Quackenbush building. And we have generated over two million hits on our original content. We're pushing on about six writers. We're pushing original content every day. We have a lot of good web series coming. We're working with the local news anchor, Kate Welshover. Uh, we're working with Greg Adela, who's a host on B95, and our goal is to basically make Upstate not only a place that creative people can stay and work, but a place that people want to come and work at. So uh, what I ask from you guys is simply to follow us. Uh, we're growing day by day. We're pushing new and cool stuff that we think you guys would want to talk about. Um, I'd love to come back here another time and talk more in depth about what we're doing, but if you can follow Two Buttons Deep, and if you know anybody that likes to write, likes to produce video, or anything of the internet age, uh, please get them in touch with me because we're growing by the day. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. My name is Linda Sagai. I'm a local nurse, and uh, I'm here to present uh, a different option for a traditional baby blanket. This is a traditional baby blanket that you see in almost every hospital across the United States. And my new idea is to have a dreaded type of baby blanket, <coughs> such as these prototypes that I started. Um, so you may ask, well, why would you want to have a dreaded baby blanket? Um, as soon as a baby is born, the first thing that the nurse has to do is they have to weigh the baby and measure the baby. The way that we measure the baby is we pop the baby on a surface, then we have to grab the head and then put a mark in the, in the feet, we stretch them out, put a mark, we roll the baby off, and then we grab a tape measure and try to get an accurate length. So my, my idea is kind of simple, just why not put a grid right on the blanket so that you can measure the baby um, right at birth 
her neonatal intensive care nurses, they could measure the baby every week on uh, these blankets. And then for home use too, the parents who uh, want to keep track of their baby's length can, can take this home and continue measuring the baby. So um, my ask for you today, this is just, I'm in the very preliminary stages of trying to do this. I'm looking for somebody who might be able to print, actually um, on this type of material. So I need a printer. Um, I don't know what kind of pitfalls I'm going to be stepping into. So if there's any business people out there who might want to give me advice on the next steps. Um, I'm, again, I'm in the very preliminary stages. I'll be sitting over there by that pole, and um, I have a I have a Gmail, a grid blanket, G R I D B L A N K E T at gmail.com, so you can email me or talk to me. I would appreciate any advice or any ideas um, to go on to the next step. Thank you very much. Next is Fred Alfenbaum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. Those of you who remained, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm a startup, barely starting up. It's me. I've had an idea in my head for a couple of decades and more, and I've got to get it out of here and into here. And in order to do that, it's in the automotive uh, industry, I need uh, one or more automotive engineers I need somebody or people who can program ignition systems. I need material scientists. That's what I need. Um, I know the idea will work. I've spoken with engineers outside the field and they've all told me, you've actually got a tiger by the tail, which is not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear it was a really good idea. I didn't want to hear you, you're already overwhelmed. Um, but it will work. I don't know exactly to what extent, but it will work. But I need people who are um, automotive engineers, uh, people who can program whatever the programming is for an ignition system, and I need materials scientists. Uh, so I wore this sweater so you won't miss me tonight. I'm sitting at that table over there. I've got my name on my heart. Come see me. If you know anybody who's in those fields, I'll contact them. We'll make nice. See what happens. I'm over at the table. Thank you very much. Okay, great. All right, great. Next we have Nadia Romanos and William Lawler. And then after them is Luke Bateman, Wesley Chiro, and Reggie Howard. So as Esther introduced us, I'm Nadia Romanos, and this is William Waller, and we are part of Tactile Version. Uh, we have actually have benefited from the New York Digital Gaming Hub, and um, we actually were part of Reveal uh, this past summer. So uh, some of you may know us, uh, we've been active for a bit in the community, and I'll hand it to William for our ask. Alright, so uh, we're looking for anybody with any connections to major VR gaming manufacturers, uh, Anybody who's actually interested in developing for VR at all, uh, look at you, Tech Valley Games. Um, Tech Valley Games, yeah, game <laughs> And uh, also, anyone who knows anything about glove design, uh, we're trying to make a really nice looking prototype, so if anyone can help us out, that'd be great. Okay. If, uh, if this were an actual pitch and I had an actual plan, I'd probably have a picture up here. And the picture would be me at age like 11 with my first entrepreneurial venture. It was actually an entrepreneurial venture. And it was me with a lemonade stand at my family's first 4th of July party. And back then I was really into sustainability and I still am. I was actually thinking of dinner really back then. But the ask then was bring back your cup or I won't fill it up. So what I want to talk, a bit, talk to you about today is uh, entrepreneurial venture at RPI. So I'm an RPI student. I grew up in Cambridge, New York, which is not that far away. I really took a, a leap coming out here. Um, and what it's called is a green revolving fund. It's an idea that is uh, really successful, about 85 institutions all across the nation. And it's a really simple idea. Basically, you get the school to invest in efficiency projects and sustainability projects. And you take the savings from that and reinvest it into a fund so you can further fund more ventures and efficiency. Um, 
So far, we've developed a team of about five students. We've gotten pretty far. We've developed the organizational design. We've done a lot of networking. Um, we're talking with investors uh, uh, that are alumni of RPI. Uh, and in the next uh, 12 months of the semester, we'll be uh, creating, a, we're creating a website, uh, producing a video, and writing up our proposal. And uh, we're really interested in this fund, potentially being able to find efficiency outside of the school as well. But uh, that's about all I have. I had a better speech in my head, but there's a lot of people in front of me. So I always take the opportunity to make a fool of myself. So thank you for listening to me. Hi, I'm Wesley Chereau, and I'm co-founder of two companies. I'll try to make this quick, because I know we're really tight on time. But essentially, the first one and the second one have both presented here previously. It's called Moot Plans, and it's called Gift Apps. Uh, Moot Plans is about to close a contract for about $800,000 with a major college in New York City. Uh, we're going to take that and spin that into a seed round for about $200,000. Gift Apps is also looking at major investment right now because they're on the verge of releasing their version 2 application that has a huge amount of functionality and there's a lot of promise in it. And both of those companies have gotten to this point without any technical ability. We don't have CTOs, it's just been us trying to program these things ourselves and getting help wherever we can. But at this point, with these stages that we're at, where we're actually looking for investment funding, we need technical help. So if you, anybody here knows anybody who wants to co-found a company and be a, a major equity partner, to be a CTO for a company, I'm really looking for those connections. Again, my name is Wesley Chereau, and I'm actually going to just tell you my phone number if you want to just like take it down and know somebody. It's 631-697-0921. And you can also find me, I've got a fancy hat, it's on that table over there. Uh, so thank you very much. Reggie Howard, next. And then we have Kim Lloyd, Jim Waller, and Carmen Duncan. Hi, good afternoon. Oh, I'd like to have birds back. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Reggie Howard, uh, founder of American Energy Consultants. Uh, we're not a startup. We uh, founded the company back in 2009 as an uh, engineering consulting firm. Um, in the last five years, I kind of worked as an incubator uh, researching and developing highly efficient energy products. Now, the problem we're trying to solve, we're actually uh, helping New York uh, State Energy uh, Research Development Authority Cheap their goats with their next HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning program. And they have three goals, main goals, that we're going to help them achieve those goals. The uh, first one is um, a 40% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from the, from the uh, 1990 levels. Uh, number two, reduce energy consumption of buildings from 2012 levels. And three, reduce HVAC here in New York energy consumption in residential and uh, commercial buildings from their 40% level. And we've come up with a solution for that, a whole solution. And this consists of a off-the-grid, solar-powered uh, HVAC system that runs 100% on renewable energy. Now, we've teamed up with uh, Mattello, which is the world's largest uh, energy research company, not-for-profit, to help us commercialize that unit. Now we've targeted a uh, market here in New York consists of about 3.5 million single family homes, uh, about 2 million small businesses, and design and build contractors. Now we do have some competition from Linux, Mitsubishi, Carrier, um, but their units are what we call grid connected, solar assist. Uh, ours will run off the grid or no grid, and run 100% on renewable energy. Now, we, we are putting forth some marketing, sales and marketing efforts here in New York. Uh, we, we will eventually build a, what we call America, manufacturing distribution center right here in upstate New York to distribute our product through a network of HVAC dealers. Now, if we develop our product, we have made some financial forecasts for New York State, uh, which would be about $1.5 million in the first year after we commercialized the unit. However, we've been getting a lot of interest in this technology, and uh, we actually have a proposal from a, a large organization that we provided to design and build a 
uh, a complex of buildings amplifying our solar HVAC system. That, that proposal is worth $85 million, and it is it's only going to be funded sometime this year. So that's the good news. Um, in the meantime, we're trying to achieve a grant in New York Serta, uh, and we will need about 20% private investment, uh, and we're trying to raise about $2 million to help us uh, ramp up our sales and marketing staff. Hello, my name is Kim Lloyd. I'm here to talk about um, the discovery phase of a large indoor sports complex built somewhere in the Capital District. Not preordained to a specific location. Uh, so right now what I'm looking for is uh, if you've ever been to uh, a sports event that your kids have been at, like a tournament, or you've helped your kids in a junior um, get junior practice schedule, whatever that might be, you realize that there's a huge lack of competitive indoor space for large um, events in the area. Leagues, practices, back in the day when I did sports, we only practiced during school season. But now there are clubs, there are tournaments, there are adult leagues, adult leagues want to do larger um, events and, and the like. So I have a partner from who built this, not looking to reinvent the wheel. He spent 18 years investigating a, um, investigating a sports complex. It's not a bubble structure. He made sure that it's not a good idea. Uh, traveling around the country, doing due diligence. I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel. I'm just gonna, he's willing to partner with me to do this in the capital district. We need to do it somewhere that's easily accessible to major thoroughfares. Like I said, I'm not preordained. It could be Latham, it could be, I've heard Harriman Complex. They have, uh, for 5.1 million, 36 acres. Phase one might be this sports complex idea. Phase two might be outdoor real retail space. We have a very much lack of outdoor good places for people to hang out in the Capital District. Stuyvesant Plaza kind of has got a scale. We need something like that. Maybe that's a phase two. The two businesses could help each other out. So I'm really looking for support on um, this six, there are eight hard courts indoors, full-size indoor track with uh, indoor full-size turf field, uh, a cafe in, inside of it. So this is something that I think the Capital District needs. And if you agree with me, and if you want to get involved in any way, shape, or form, whether you want to get involved in, in, um, in just saying, hey, what do you guys need? Where do you think this should be located? What are some considerations? Uh, I think that this could be a really big idea for the Capital District, and I would like to go after the REDC dollars that have to do with funding building better communities to attract other businesses, because that's what, we're in the, in, we're in the Northeast, it kind of sucks, so. Um, <laughs> I have to be honest, for indoor sports, so we want to do something to make it better. So please go to the Capital District Sports Complex Facebook page, share your thoughts, your ideas, why you think it will work. Tell me why you think it won't work. I'd love to hear those ideas as well. All right, thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jamie Waller. I'm a, uh, currently a junior at RPI studying aeronautical and mechanical engineering. I'm a uh, former Marine where I did aviation operations and I also was an aircraft fueler, so I love aircraft. Um, I also uh, happen to be the proud owner of a 215-acre former ski mountain up in the Adirondacks, a little place that used to be called uh, Silver Bells, operated in the 60s and 70s. So I love aircraft, I have a ton of land. Um, well, I can't build aircraft, but I can certainly build drones, UAPs. Um, so what I'd like to do is, uh, as crazy as it sounds, I would like to research, test, develop, and manufacture UAVs at my property up in the Adirondacks. Um, currently, the FAA regulations state that any drone that wants to be flown within five miles radius of uh, any airport, so, so Albany, you need explicit authorization from air traffic control. Uh, and I actually got that this morning, but it was not necessarily a hassle, but for, for the average you know, tester, uh, kind of a hassle. Um, so to quote you know, Donald Rumsfeld, you know, there are no knowns, there are known unknowns, um, but then there are the unknown unknowns. Um, and I believe that, that my creativity as well as the community's you know, creativity is, is slightly stifled with, with respect to restrictions. 
Um, so my ask is actually threefold. Um, my ask is for anybody out there that are builders, that are programmers, um, that are visionaries, enthusiasts, drone enthusiasts, anybody who ever like, looked up in the sky and said, hey, I wonder like, what I can do with that. Well, I have the place, um, and I'd like to build a community. I'd like to you know, get excited and get, get energized about you know, being, being crazy to, to test and develop uh, aircraft, because I have the land to do so. Um, I have a 1,300-foot summit that we can, we can fly off and, and not, not be afraid that when it crashes, it's going to hit anybody because nobody lives there. Um, the, 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 two part, the, the second part is, is I would like to um, have a drone race event, a regional, local, national, uh, sometime this summer. And, um, and if anybody has experience with that, please come see me. Um, also, anybody out there that, that, that has a startup or, or a company um, that needs physical space, please come see me. I would love to come collaborate. Uh, I've got this big piece of property and, and great ideas, but it's just me and I. Like, I, I decided to come here instead of studying for my dynamics test tomorrow. So uh, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's all I got. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Carmen Duncan, and of course I stand before you today as a millennial social entrepreneur. But I want you to think back to 1998. At that time, I was 15 years old. I was very heavily involved in street violence. And I was watching my grandmother die. I was watching my uncle die from AIDS. And I found my favorite uncle dead on my grandmother's porch. My mother sent me up here with my father so that I could get disconnected from what I was involved in. And I essentially came up here doing the same thing. And within the year that I moved up here, my father was incarcerated, eight year sentence, and my brother was incarcerated seven years to life. And I ended up homeless, and I lived in the Equinox Independent Living Program in Albany from 16, I was close to 17, to about 19 years old, and then they helped me get my own apartment. <coughs> I had a lot of mentors and coaches who really believed in me, including my family, including my mom. Um, and I eventually got to a point where I realized my self-worth and I started to realize that it, even though I was in a grad program at the time that I came up with the idea of Mission Accomplished, there were multiple individuals who were in my, in my grad courses, in my grad classes, as well as the students that I was working with who did not know how to get from point A to point Z. And because of the mentors and coaches that I had, they were determined that I was not going to be a statistic, and I decided that I wanted to pay it forward. So today, I'm the CEO and founder of Mission Accomplished Transition Services. I called it Mission Accomplished because I felt like I accomplished my mission against all odds. And my two asks today is one, I'm looking for board members who understand a startup, a startup social, um, social enterprise or nonprofit organization and want to help us grow. So since 2012, I've been able to raise over $700,000, and those numbers are growing. And this year, I gave myself a really big goal of raising $529,000, and I need a team to help me do that, so that I can continue, my team and I can continue to invest in people the same way that people invest in. Wow. All right. That's a tough act to follow. So next, uh, we have three left, so hang in there. Jason Lebrecht. Lebrecht. Did I say that right? Okay. And then Jennifer Thompson. Janine, sorry. And um, last but not least will be Donnie DeVito. My name is Jason Lebrecht. Uh, I want to ask the audience, are there any veterans here? I want to thank you for your service. Thank you very much. In most of the counties in New York State, 39 counties, there is a program called Return the Favor Veteran Discount Program. The favor uh, stands for Find and Assist Veterans of Record. And it's a program that was started in Rockland County 
to get veterans to bring in their DD-214s, which are their, our discharge papers. And as a thank you for doing that, or actually, let me rephrase that. Sorry. As a, as a reason for doing that, they put it on record so that if that DD-214 ever becomes lost or damaged, then they can always go to the uh, county clerk's office and get that document, which is very important to tell you. Um, and as a thank you for doing that, the Rockland County uh, Clerk Office started a discount program where they went to the local um, businesses and asked if they wanted to give a discount to the veterans uh, on this program. And that caught on to a lot of counties in New York State. 39 counties of New York State have this program. Unfortunately, when a veteran goes in and registers themselves and gets a card and gets a discount, that discount is in, or that discount list is in the form of a spreadsheet. And obviously, that is not ideal. So my project right now, what I'm working on, is to take this list, put it in the form of a app, using Lyft Mobile as the uh, app platform, and also use an interactive website so that any veteran can walk around, regardless of whether they're in Rensselaer County or Saratoga County or Albany County, and they could pull up this app and just look at the closest discount available to them. Um, I have two asks tonight. One of them is if you're a veteran or if you're a business that wants to give a discount to uh, veterans, uh, you can email myself, jason at googlecards.com, or come see me, I have a flyer, um, and I can send you an email link uh, of your county and how to register yourself, or, um, or for the greater part of the community, if you uh, want to help me out with this, uh, with marketing or how to get into a uh, local company, uh, local um, government, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Janine Thompson. I am a licensed landscape architect in New York and Massachusetts. I founded J.M. Thompson Landscape Architecture. I am also a graduate of RPI and ESF. And I am looking, thank you, <laughs> my fellow Sophie. I am looking for opportunities to work with you on your property, whether it's a commercial property or residential property. My business focuses on sustainability. Uh, we work on master plans, site plans, landscape plans, uh, permitting. I have a New York State WBE and a New York City WBE. Uh, if you'd like, I have a special right now. It's $75, and I will come to your property for an hour and a half to two hours. We would talk about what you want to do and what you want to accomplish on your property. And I would give you a plan of action. If you sign on with me, I will give you 15% off my design services. Thank you very much. Have a great day. I guess I'm the last one, so I'm between you and having some beer. <laughs> I, uh, I'm Donnie DeVito. I'm the President and Chief Operating Officer of a startup here in Tech Valley, a company called Kirsch Helmets. The inventor and founder of the company is in the back, uh, Jason Kershaw. And we have an innovative impact technology that really will take the world of helmet technology and safety and change it. It is an American innovation. It's a true, true American company. Everything that we do is made in the United States. So we're very proud of that. We plan, uh, Jason, we plan to hire veterans. We, a lot of our final assembly is going to be done here in the local market. Uh, our final assembly can be done by people in a seated position. So we feel that we can offer tremendous opportunity to give jobs and bring either people from and who are coming back off active duty, boots to books and then to work. That's what we're looking to do. So one of my asks here is we're hiring people, we're looking for interns, we're, we're growing this company very quickly. So that's what we're gonna need help with. Next month, uh, you heard at the beginning of this uh, event tonight, Tony Civitello talking about the Startup Tech Valley event that's coming in April, April 5th. Uh, we're gonna be speaking at that. And I want you to think about something 
between then and now. I want you to remember a number, 158, 158. That's how many people every day in the United States die from traumatic brain injury. 250,000 people, kids under 19 years of age, if you have children that play sports, 250,000 people a year in that age bracket suffer a traumatic brain injury. They get concussions, they have impact. Sometimes it's just a, uh, they get knocked out, a small injury, they, there's loss of memory, uh, confusion. Uh, those are the kinds of problems that we see but sometimes no one even knows the damage that can be done. So our impact technology is gonna change the way helmet technology can protect the head and protect individuals from concussion, from traumatic brain injury, from all of the terrible things that can happen, whether you're riding a motorcycle, you're in an automobile, that is a problem. And we think we can really change it. I know Jason's invented technology that is, again, a true innovation and we're going to make it all here in the United States as we try to bring manufacturing back from China and Korea and Taiwan and Japan, places that all of our manufacturing went to. We're going to bring it back here, make it all in the United States, make it by uh, great Americans, people that have served our country, and we're looking forward to doing that. So, again, remember those numbers, and please think about it between now and next month when the time comes for us to get together again, and we'll tell you more about how we're doing it.